guys, in this video, I want to talk about a very good wide angle lens that is also very inexpensive for those on a budget, just starting out in photography. If you want to do uh, landscape or astrophotography, or even if you're shooting indoors in theater, the Rokinon uh, 16 millimeter F2, F2.0 uh, is very nice. The main reason I think that it's so inexpensive is because it's a manual focus lens, not autofocus. So when you do want to focus on a subject, you're going to want to turn it all the way to infinity. And that won't give you the clear, perfect image that you normally would expect, turning it all the way to infinity. You want to turn it just a hair back where the two lines meet up. And for astrophotography, this is especially important so you can focus on a bright star in the distance. And once that becomes clear, you'll have a really good shot at, at everything else. The first application I want to talk about for this, because I see there aren't enough videos uh, reviewing this lens. And I don't necessarily want to call this a review, it's just my two cents, but for all intents and purposes. Uh, 16 millimeters will give you slightly more room and a bigger option than say a kit lens. I'm, I shoot most of my uh, photos with uh, the, the Canon 80D and the kit lens being the 18 to 135 millimeter. The kit lens at 18 millimeters is very good, don't get me wrong, but at at f-stop 3.5 aperture, it will only give you so much light. And then you may have to bump up the ISO, uh, change the shutter speed, and depending on if your subject is moving or not, that can be kind of iffy. Here's an example of an early morning uh, hike I was taking around uh, a national park when I went camping over Thanksgiving weekend. You can see with the kit lens at 18 millimeters, you see how much light is coming in. See the borders of the frame there. Now look at the 16 millimeters at f2 compared to f3.5. Obviously, there's more and it is better. It's not the most in focus in that image, but it is better. Here's another example. Further on down uh, the trail where I was hiking, see this nice tree you know right by a lake and I wanted to use this as an example just to compare the two you see how much of the tree you can get at 18 millimeters and then you can see how much more you can get at 16 millimeters it may not seem like much of a difference but take into consideration how much room you have behind you and whether or not you can move around if you don't have that much space to move around then this will definitely help. Now the third example, and this is a big one, is shooting indoors in very low light. And theater is a very good example of very poor light. And shooting in theater can be very tough with an aperture of 3.5. It's okay, but with your subjects moving around, you're gonna have to change the shutter speed and uh, it could be better. So looking at this image of a stage, now think about if you have, if you're shooting a play that has a large cast, say you're shooting musical theater, for whatever reason, Yo. something with a big cast, and you want to get everyone in the frame. Now depending on where you are, you're, you're definitely not going to get it uh, close to the stage, and depending on how far back the house goes, before you hit the wall, you might not be able to get it with, you know, especially with a, with a kit lens. Or even if you are able to get it with a kit lens, the lighting may not be quite as good. Oh, what light do yonder lens breaks? So again, at 60 millimeters at f2, uh, you see the difference there. And it's, it's very good and very important if you want everybody to, to look good, if you don't have a lot of light shining down on them. So if you're fortunate enough to uh, photograph a show on stage, now 
obviously you're not going to want to use this lens for that. That's not uh, the primary, primary uh, purpose because one, the actors, the singers, whoever, they're going to be moving around on stage and you're going to want a lens that can autofocus and keep up with them. So probably a zoom lens is better for that, which I'll cover in another video. Uh, again, this lens is more for group shots and cast photos, maybe publicity photos. Be sure that you manually set not only the focus, but also set the f-stop. And it ranges from f2 to f22. So landscapes, you'll be fine. You want to get the sharp mountains and trees in the distance, make it look just like a Bob Ross painting. But keep in mind that when you upload your files to the computer, if you look at the details of the image, it will always show F0. Your f-stop will show a zero, even though it's not, don't worry, it, it's gonna show that just because of the nature of the lens. It's a manual focus, so if you need that information, be sure to write it down before you shoot it. So getting back to another scenario is astrophotography. Now here's another example of the kit lens. Even when you can get the pinpoint sharpness on the stars, uh, depending on how long you can leave the shutter open to get that. Now look at the 16 millimeters f2. And more light will come in, meaning more stars in the photo. And that was the primary reason that I bought this lens. I've learned since then, but the primary reason was I wanted a lens that I could shoot astrophotography with. And knowing that you have to manually set everything on it, just keep that in mind. And you'll, and you'll be fine. And I don't want to say it's a negative aspect and a con um, with, this, with this lens, why it's not a, as pricey as some others, but it's just something to be aware of. So yeah, that's a brief overview of one of the three lenses that a beginning photographer should look into investing in. The other obviously being a kit lens. And I'd have to say, the Nifty 50, which is the 50 millimeter f1.8, and that's only like 125 bucks on Amazon. Do the research on as many lenses as you can, and then narrow that down to what you can afford in your budget. A lens that can serve more than one function. It can shoot landscapes very well. It can do astrophotography very well. As long as you keep in mind, you have to manually focus it, the f-stop, as well as the focus wheel. And also um, indoor shots, like theater, if everyone is posed, not moving around. So I hope this helped. You know, even if you don't intend to buy this one, you should at least have a little more knowledge. And now you have some more examples of what can be done with this lens as compared to something close to it, uh, which is really what I want to see more of in review uh, videos for YouTube. I want, I want to see more pictures uh, giving examples, so I hope this helped with that. And so until next time, be excellent, and I'll see you in the next one.